to thank B&H for having me. It's really an honor. I get to work with them all the time. Michelle, his entire team, Jessica, thank you so much. Uh, we're talking about two cameras today, and they're both 4K cameras. So I'm really excited to be announcing this on the stage here at B&H. So the first, I want to start with the specs, and then I'll bring it out. But we're going to start here. 4K resolution, the UHD variant, 3840 by 2160 internal recording, 12 stops of dynamic range, 12 megapixel stills, and a Digic DV5 processor all in one camera. But where the creativity for this camera exists for me is in the weight and the size. It is incredibly small, and that's the XC10. It's an incredibly tiny 4K camera with 12 stops of dynamic range and a fixed 10 times 4K zoom lens. So we're going to talk about this camera and dig into the features. Just over two pounds, it's remarkably small. It comes with an EVF loop that attaches to the back of the camera that's in the box. And it fixes to the back here, and then it's tilting as well. And that comes straight in the box with the camera. So we're going to go through the features and show the entire new system that we've employed in this camera. So here it is. It's less than five inches wide, less than five inches long, and only four inches tall. So remarkably small for a 4K image capture device. And this is the build out that you could do straight out of the box. So it comes with your lens hood and your loop. So really, in a daylight environment, VJs, documentary filmmakers, running gun, when you can't just look at that screen, you have that loop there so you can really isolate the screen and see what you're shooting. And to really stress the size, that background image, that's a C100 Mark II. It's not a 300 or 500. So this camera is just incredibly small. So I like, when I talk about cameras, I like to start with the lens and sort of work our way back through the system. This is a fully Canon-designed camera. That one-inch sensor is a Canon original sensor. So from front to back, you're looking at a Canon camera. 10 times optical zoom lens, a one-inch CMOS, again, 12 stops of dynamic range. Now, I know one inch, especially for the motion folks in the crowd, one inch is a sort of new sensor size for motion capture. That one-inch sensor is 6.8 times the size of the sensor in the XA25, which is commonly referred to as a third inch. So that area is much larger. So to get shallow depth of field, it won't be as easy as a Super 35 sensor, but you could still get there, especially at the telephoto len uh, length. Digic DV5 processor. We're employing two of these in the C300 Mark II. And in this extremely tiny camera here, we have one of them. And it's providing a lot of power in a really small form factor. And XFABC, which really is sort of the backbone of what we're pulling out of this camera. It's our new codec. It's an MXF wrapper, so don't worry about your editing systems. It's native in Premiere. You get a plug-in for Avid, Final Cut, you're good to go. But that XF ABC is MPEG-4. It's the new variant of MPEG. That allows us to do is really high bit rate recording. And we'll get into the specs a little bit, but it really allows us to juice out the sensor and capture an amazing image. And all that's being captured to CFast 2.0. This isn't, it might be the same shape as Compact Flash, but it's a whole new system. From the pins to the actual architecture, you're talking about read, write speeds between four and above 500 megabits per second. Enormous power in these small, small cards. So again, our 10 times optical zoom lens, when extended, is less than 1.5 inches. It's extremely, extremely small. It was designed specifically for this camera. So what you get out of it when you're shooting movies is a 27.3 to 273 millimeter lens. It's an incredible zo zoom length. So you have to imagine this sitting along the rest of the cinema EOS line, even DSLRs, as a camera that's providing a confluence of features that don't really exist anywhere else. You know, I have people asking me at the show, Can I, should I get this instead of a C100? Not necessarily. But sitting alongside it, the arsenal becomes extremely powerful. And we'll kind of talk about how it sits alongside these cameras. So here's, I really want you know, the one-inch sensor, again, for, for us motion people, it's a little bit new. So here's a comparison about, of the size across the sensors. There's Super 35. That's what's in our Cinema EOS cameras, 4 thirds. That 1, 1 over 2.84, we commonly refer to as 1 third inch, but that's what's in the XA20 and the XA25. Oftentimes, our sensors are a little bit bigger. It gives us room for image stabilization and some of those features. So there's the, the one-inch sensor. The biggest thing here, though, is 12 stops of dynamic range. The only other place that's existed is in Cinema EOS, and ISO up to 20,000. 
So this truly is a compact, throw it in the bag, B camera to our Cinema EOS line. And we're talking from documentary, video journalists, all the way to you're mounting a crash cam, a strange angle, your car mounting, you need something that's quick and versatile. This sits really nicely against the rest of the Cinema EOS line. So here, this is, I promise you're not going to get really, really specky with the cameras, but this is the, the medius chart. And these are our frame rates in 4K. So again, there's our MXF file format. Uh, we're doing a 4228 bit. And look at the bit rate, 305 megabits per second. Now, just to contextualize that, our C300, we all know what that image quality is like. It's been around for a little while. We're, that's an 8-bit, 50 megabit per second bit rate. This is 305 megabits per second. So although this is a one-inch sensor, the amount of information we're pulling off of it is just enormous. You can also do a 205 megabit per second variant, and that just gives you more recording time onto your media, up to 30 frames in 4K. And in HD, we're getting up to 60p. And again, that's a MXF MPEG-4 variant as well. So you're getting 4228-bit in HD, not 420. So your color, your chroma subsampling is less, uh, you know, less uh, aggressive on the image, and you're getting a nice color information out of the camera. That HD image is going to be recorded to the SD card slot. So for HD, it's a really affordable media solution. SD cards, we all have them sitting around. Um, so it's a really great HD camera as well. Oh, can't forget in a little uh, in the back here. At 1280 by 720 at the bottom, you see we're shooting 120p. So it's not full HD, but in 1280, you can get 120 frames per second out of something that's about two pounds. It's remarkable. This was um, a really interesting feature, and I, I wanted to highlight a little bit because I think it's necessary. In 4K, when you're shooting 4K, you have the magnify for focus assist, and that's been standard on our most cameras. But what's great here is you have a zooming playback as well. So we don't have a 4K screen, a tiny little 4K screen on this camera. It just really wasn't possible in this form factor. But you can zoom in and view the HD while you're playing back and move it around with your finger. So if you really want to check that you have that critical focus, you punch in when you're playing back, you move that image around, and you can see exactly what your shot looks like. And I'm really excited about this as well, 4K HDMI out. So for all you external recorder buffs, you got a Shogun, Odyssey 7Q, whatever it is, convergent design, you can record 4K out of this camera or monitor. So if you're bringing this onto a professional film set and your DP really wants to see the image quality out of this camera, you go to a 4K monitor and boom, there's that full resolution coming straight out of the camera. Now this is where it becomes really interesting and where Canon's really curious about how all of you are going to wind up using this camera. It's a truly hybrid motion and still capture device. I can capture 4K at 24, 25, or 30p, play it back, and scrub through that movie file, frame at a time or a little bit faster at your discretion, pick an image, and save it as an 8 megapixel still goes direct to the SD card. So imagine you're on set, you're shooting behind the scenes, right? And part of your media package is not only am I delivering 4K movie acquisition, but I'm going to give you stills. And I'm going to give you stills immediately. You can hook up the producer, your client's phone directly to the camera through the browser remote and send them stills straight from the 4K movie file and never have to actually take a still image. But in addition to that, you put it into still photo mode and you're getting 12 megapixels with a, me with a mechanical shutter. So it truly is a still image capture device as well. So this shows us um, the, the different ways that you can extract the image and um, take that image and save it. So one of the great designs, that, and it really, I think, started with the XA20 was we get mixed opinions about touchscreen. Some people love it, some people hate it. And when you look at the feedback, it's right down the middle. I mean, it's 50-50. And even when I use cameras, I see that I do a bit of both. So what this video is showing is how you can extract the still images without really ever touching the screen. But then also there's a component where if you are familiar with a touchscreen interface, it's more natural to you, you can actually go in and just use the touchscreen to extract that still. And it's really it's giving a multi-function to the shutter button, the ability to play, pause, extract. The great thing here is that it goes straight to the SD card. And because there's built-in Wi-Fi, you're really skipping that, the computer in that process. 
you know, previously you're shooting 4K, you bring that image into your computer and then you extract the stills in your editor. You're skipping the computer entirely. The, S the photo's being saved to the SD card and you're wirelessly, wirelessly transferring wherever you want to go. This is really, really cool. Compatible EOS accessories. So you have the LPE6N DSLR battery right into the handle, just like the DSLRs. Compatible with your DSLR chargers. No new battery system, goes right into the handle there. It comes with the remote controller RC6. You can start, stop, photo, and movie mode. But it's also compatible with speed lights. So if you go into 12 megapixel photo mode, you can use that mechanical shutter and make, take advantage of the speed lights you might already have. And then the 320EX actually has a video light on it. So in that one product, you're getting a video light, you're getting a flash speed light, and if you're really doing hybrid workflow, stills and video, that one speed light is really, really handy. And then the GPE2 receiver, and this is really for those video journalists, those documentary filmmakers that are bouncing around the world and want that global positioning metadata, it's compatible, compatible with the XC10 as well. So really making use of those EOS accessories that a lot of people already own. Some of the additional features, we have five axis image stabilization in HD, two axis in 4K, UD and high UD lens, lenses, that which greatly reduce more and suppress chromatic aberration, and guide bars for increased lens stabilization. So there's actually two guide bars, a technology that we've implemented into some of our cinema lenses. That technology is coming down into this line as well to add image stabilization across the zoom. So again, just to recap, 4K, 3840 by 2160, 12 stops of dynamic range, 12 megapixel still camera with mechanical shutter, the Digic DV5 image processor, 2499. Now, CFast Media, right? CFast 2.0. I don't know if you guys are familiar with CFast 2.0. It's not the most affordable media format right now. So I'm going to touch on it, because I know that's going to be the first questions. The SanDisk Extreme Pro 64 gigabit card, and then that incredible speed up to 515 megabits per second, it's approximately $400. The reader, CFS 2.0 reader, you need a brand new reader. It won't work in the compact flash readers. It's approximately 50. And when you purchase this camera, we're giving that to you in the box for free. So straight out of the box, you got your battery, you got your loop, your media, and your reader. You're all ready to go. Just get out and shoot. And we really want to make that, you know, we want to ease the pain of that transition into CFAST because it really is becoming the new media format for these high resolution capture cameras. What do you guys think? Is it, you like it? Is it a good camera? <laughs> OK, great. Awesome. All right, C300 Mark II. So we're taking a big leap in the line right now. I had to pry this out of people's hands as I walked from the Canon booth to here. This is my, I got way too many people eyeing the camera on the way here. C300 Mark II. So it shoots 4K and 2K internally. Again, to CFast 2.0 cards. So you're seeing how CFast is really being employed in the Canon line now. We have the Canon 8.85 megapixel CMOS sensor. It's a brand new sensor. This is not the same sensor as the other Cinema EOS cameras. And dual digit DV5. This is really a brand new camera. It's not just an evolution of the C300. But one of the biggest features for me, personally, is 15 stops of dynamic range. That's an enormous latitude in a camera this small. And all of that really rests on that new sensor, but the dual digit DV5. We have two processors in this camera, which just, I mean, it's an incredible amount of horsepower. When Canon builds a camera, having spoken to the engineers time and time again, one of the things they refuse to do is give you advantages in one area and sacrifice in another. So we're not shorthanding any feature in the design of this camera. And I'll go through it, and you will see how Really, especially with that dual digit DV5, we're boosting all the features of this camera. So just to give you some images, it's the front, the back. Very similar design to the C300, even the C500 to a degree. And this is where that, that new sensor is really just performing a remarkable latitude. This is the 15 stops of dynamic range. The two bars that are adjacent to one another, what you're looking at is Canon Log and what's now Canon Log 2. So we have a brand new log curve for this brand new sensor. 
but we're not getting rid of Canon logs. So if you have C300s or you're on a multi-camera set and there's C300s, C100s present, you still have that C, that Canon log to shoot in that gamma. But what we've done is we've shifted Canon log two up. The reason we did this, if anyone who sort of bemoans the, the loss of film, one of the great things about film is highlight roll off. And the feedback from cinematographers was missing, they missed the highlight roll off. That when highlights blow out, this sort of beautiful roll off in the highlights, not this hard sort of digital edge. So what Canon did was, is we took that 15 stops of dynamic range and we put it up a stop into the highlights. So now that highlight roll off, those really bright areas are, are going to have a really beautiful roll off. And again, dipping way deep into the blacks. Canon log, while that gamma still exists, is still benefited by the 15 stops. So when you're in Canon log mode, it's not the 12 stops of the C300, it's still 15 stops. But it's a matching gamma. Our base ISO, you'll notice, is 800. It's no longer 850. And we got a lot of feedback about people out in the field with their light meters, and you know, she's on set trying to get a good light meter reading. A lot of our light meters are 800 ISO. The new sensor, base ISO, 800. What's incredible, and this again, it, it all goes back to that dual digit DV5 processing, is the 102,400 ISO. I mean, it's, it's like doesn't even make sense that we use ISO anymore. It's just an enormous, enormous number. But more important than that is the, the noise suppression. You know, it's not just how high the ISO goes, it's how good the grain looks. So that dual digit DV5 is doing an incredible amount of grain suppression while maintaining that sort of dancing quality that the C300 is known for. So this is the new sensor. And we're, what we're looking at here is the color matrices that we're able to capture with the camera. So you have your Rec. 709, your standard you know, sort of broadcast Rec. 709 variant. We have DCI-P3, which is more familiar in the cinema world. You have Rec. 2020, which is the new iteration of Rec. 709, wider color space. And then you'll notice Cinema Gamut. Cinema Gamut is a Canon-designed gamut. And it goes outside human perception. And the point of Cinema Gamut was to begin to encapsulate film emulsion. There's so many film stocks out there that have so many different color shifts and qualities. We wanted to create one gamut that covered as many of them as possible. And this is really for that high end, someone who's de designing a color grade from the gamut up. We provide this Canon original gamut that's very, very wide. ACES, I won't go into do too deep in the Canon booth that we have some ACES demonstrations, but ACES is the academy is designing a color space that's meant to encapsulate all color spaces. And that's for delivery, future proofing material. And we want to just uh, mention that we are on the board for ACES, collaborating with them constantly, and we're inputting into what that ACES workflow will be. So as you learn more about ACES, just know Canon's right there. I mentioned before how Canon refuses to pull certain features down to boost others. Oftentimes, when sensor performance increases, the readout slows. And this is when you think about rolling shutter or skew, when you pan a camera on a DSLR and all the lines start to go this way. That's affected by your sensor readout. And on this camera, we have a twice as fast sensor readout. It's two times as fast as before. So not only are you getting 4K and 2K internal, 15 stops, all these added features, the readout's faster. So again, across the board, just increasing the ability of the camera. And these are all our capabilities for internal recording. You'll notice that 4K, it's a 10-bit color space. We're doing intro recording, so each frame is compressed individually. We're going up to 30p. We're doing a new 24-bit audio up from that 16-bit, so better audio quality, four-channel recording, dual XLR in, onboard mic, and eighth inch, and 410 megabits per second. Again, the C300 is a 50 megabit per second bit rate. And it's amazing what Canon was able to do with that compression scheme. And now we're at 410 megabits per second. For people who really prioritize color, you might be sitting there saying, you know what, resolution's not my thing. I'm not doing 4K right now. For me personally, color space is my number one. That's just how I shoot. And while 4K is important for many reasons, I really, I'm a bit depth person. I'm a color space person. So when you look at the color space, in 2K, you'll notice this RGB 444, 12-bit. 12 12-bit 12 color, you're talking about over 68 billion colors. 10-bit is just over 8 billion. So you're getting almost 60 billion more colors when you're shooting 12-bit. It's an enormous jump. So if you're bringing a project into a grade and you really want to 
juice out as much in your color grading suite, that 12-bit internal is really, really, really advantageous. So it's really a preference now. And a lot of projects we know, we're getting 4K mandates, and so required delivery format, 4K original off the sensor. So Canon knew this was a serious need, but we didn't want to ignore that 12-bit recording as well. You still have your 4208 bit, so you could shoot proxies while you're recording 4K in camera for your quick dailies, turnaround. What's really cool is, too, you can record 4K internally and send out 4K raw at the same time. So if you want to get a mass, a raw master that you're going to archive and compress 4K on board, you could do both at once. Autofocus. I come from a really traditional film background, shooting on Bolexes, 16 mil. So autofocus, to me, was you don't talk about it. Autofocus in this camera is completely different because what Canon realized was for most people when we interviewed and got feedback, autofocus felt like a ball and chain. So what we're introducing in this camera is autofocus that you can control. So this is our dual pixel AF technology. I don't want to go too deep into it, but it's just really impressive. Every photo site, every pixel on the sensor is, whoop, is split in half. Your readout, your image readout is coming in full from that diode, but on each diode, that's the, the two halves are giving you information to drive autofocus, and that's across the entire sensor. Just to give you a little context for, for dual pixel AF. We've expanded the AF area. Cinema EOS cameras, the originals, that AF area was fixed in the middle. We're now 80% of the frame. So that original center, 20 and 25% is where it traditionally sits now. That autofocus area is 80% of the frame, and you can move the box around. Wherever that box is, you will get critical focus. And now you can control it with either joystick and move it around the entire frame. This is even more important at 4K. If you're just shooting a sit-down interview, and more and more it's trending towards these producers, VJs are going out in the field, and they're shooting alone, you want to be able to set up that camera and know that it's going to stay in focus. So one of the, one of the things we added as well is the, the face detect for all EF lenses. In the C100 Mark II, face detect works only with the STM lenses. With the STM lenses, and here, that face detect AF is going to be all of our lenses and across 80% of that frame. So you sit someone down, their frame right, you put face only on, and that's it. You're done. It'll lock on with any of our EF lenses and record at that 4K quality. You're not having to worry about magnifying in and doing one-to-one -one and making sure you're in focus. They move forward and back. It'll hold that focus throughout your entire interview. Again, adding to that control, one of the biggest feedback points was we need to control the speed of the autofocus. We don't want it as fast as possible. So you have 10 steps of AF speed tuning. It goes from plus 7 to negative 3. Please ignore, there's some uh, Japanese caricatures up there. It will be in English as well when the camera comes out. But it's going to be adjustable AF speed tuning and the tracking sensitivity. So tracking sensitivity, if you're from the still world, what's really incredible about this is you can change the sensitivity of the tracking. So if something interferes with your shot, it's not just going to grab onto the action. And this is really key for sports, any fast action image capture. So if I'm shooting a football game, 4K, and I'm throttling on my AF, I'm using all sorts of the AF functionality, I don't want someone to run in front of my frame or a ref to get in the way, and suddenly my autofocus is grabbing onto that person. So you can bring that sensitivity down and really control the tracking. This is really best served by really seeing it and feeling it. So I, I welcome you to come to the Canon booth at some point and be able to actually see and feel this new functionality. But this is an incredible new feature that I know I'm going to use the most out of all this autofocus functionality. And it's for manual focusing. So many of us, no matter how much customization you can get, no matter how good the autofocus gets, just want to shoot manual. What this technology is doing is using the sensor and the DAF capabilities to give you a visual focus aid. So if I'm on the lens and I turn that barrel and I'm too far to the left, you're going to see that first image. And as I turn the lens, those arrows are going to move until they line up and it turns green. So if you're shooting by yourself or you're just, again, in a quick environment, or because you're shooting 4K, you want that additional security that you're locked in focus, you have this new focus indicator that, again, you can move all across the frame. So if you're a manual focus shooter, this is a huge, huge feature. 
the ability to just look at that screen and say, I know where I am. And to that comfort, I come from that DSLR shooting where we were just throttling back and forth, hopefully finding the focus and just hoping you were locked on. All these abilities now give you that added comfort, especially at shooting at 4K. The construction is completely different on this camera. We got internal die cast construction. It's dust proof and drip, drip proof. That die cast construction extends into the handle. This is removable, comes with the camera. It's basically a cheese plate. You have all these mounting points. This little hat here too comes with the camera. Die cast construction. I mean, this is a seven pound camera and I can shake it all I want. It's an incredible rigid design. Uh, we have, the, again, the reinforced top handle bracket, those quarter 20 holes. We're going to have an optional 15 millimeter rod, rod mount, so when you want a viewfinder on the camera, you put your rod in and your viewfinder just goes in right there. Canon accessory, no th overthinking what you have to buy. It'll be just right on that Canon webpage on B&H's site, and it'll work right with what comes out of the box. Our cables. Has anyone shot Cinema EOS, C300, C100? Okay. We now have breakaway cables. So what that means is these cables are not fixed to the camera. Something goes wrong with a cable, you're out, someone steps on it, it gets clipped, they detach from both ends, and they're swappable. And we're offering them in two different sizes as well. And this was a, a huge amount of feedback came back from the field about having the cable attached to this unit could cause issues. Someone grabs it by the cable, if something goes wrong, you have to replace the unit, not just the cable. And we completely heard that feedback, and now we have breakaway cables in this size and a longer one as well. Uh, the OLED viewfinder, it was previously LS, uh, LCD, now it's OLED. Uh, WS VGA, 1.77 million dot resolution. The really big thing for me here is that 5,000 to 1 contrast ra ratio on the viewfinder. So you look in here, it's a beautiful image. You're going to get that amazing contrast ratio and an expanded color gamut. So you want to really, your, your EVF, you want to be as accurate to what you're recording. And we're really stepping up the technology in the viewfinder here as well. Another feedback point was on-screen display. I have an issue when I'm shooting, and I, I've heard this from other people as well. When your menu items on the right cover your image, you tend to frame differently because those menu items are kind of obstructing. You tend to ignore them. We've created an option where just by tapping the, the display button once, that image punches in a little bit, and all the menu items, except for the audio levels, go to that border. So they're out of the way. They just get out of the way, and you can just focus in on your image. Aspect ratio markers, I'm not going to say all of them, but the most important one is custom. So no matter what shooting environment you're in, whatever your aspect ratio markers need to be, you set them in camera. So for you're using different types of lenses, you're, going, you wanna, uh, you're shooting for an effect that's you know, you're delivering to an iPad, you're delivering to a format that's not 16 by 9 or traditional, you can change your aspect ratio markers and really dial in what that aspect ratio will be. So these are some additional features. 4K oversampling for HD. So when you're shooting HD, in camera it's going from 4K to HD and it really suppresses moray and improves that grain quality. It's a feature of the C100 Mark II as well. So when shooting HD, you're still getting the benefit of 4K just being downsampled in camera. The completely new cooling system, we have two fans, and these fans crank out an incredible amount of cooling. The exhaust on this camera is enormous, so we're getting a lot of heat dissipation, and as soon as you hit that record button, that fan shuts off. Four channel, 24-bit audio, again going from 60, 16 to 24-bit, so a better audio quality. YDR and YDR flat gamma. That's really, again, to match the other Cinema EOS cameras, we included YDR, and YDR takes that Canon log curve and brings it into Rec. 709, something you could just deliver while having that dynamic range. And YDR flat requires a little bit more grading. So now you have YDR, YDR flat, Canon log, and Canon log 2. So an incredible array of gammas to allow you to choose what you want your image to look like. On-screen f-stop and t-stop. So if you have a Canon cinema lens on here, you're going to see that t-stop rating. The buttons on the side, you're not going to be able to see here, but you push this little button here, and these buttons all light up. So if you're in the dark, they all light up. Your AC, if you have a camera assistant, doesn't have to search for where those buttons are. One tap, boom, you see where all those buttons are. We also redesigned the, the button action. So when you pr press them, there's no click. It's a silent action. It really feels a lot softer. You won't hear that operation while you're recording. So that's the XC10 and the C300 Mark II.
I want to thank you very much for listening and being so attentive.